In this video, I will explain Microsoft's justifications for ditching support for older CPUs in Windows 11, focusing specifically on a feature carried over from Windows 10 called Memory Integrity, and how it's enabling new security protections in Windows 11. Russell here, Editorial Director of Petri.com in This Life and IT Consultant in a previous one. If your device doesn't have an 8th generation Intel CPU and a couple of other security features like a trusted platform module and secure boot, you can still install Windows 11, but it won't be officially supported by Microsoft. And the Windows 11 2022 update that's available right now doesn't change those hardware requirements. But one of the protections that's in the new feature update is being made possible by a security feature that is now being enabled on a wider set of Windows 11 devices that have modern CPUs. So what exactly is this feature? Well, it's called memory integrity. And when it's enabled, it makes it difficult for hackers to access low level drivers that might usually have access to the kernel. So it works by using a virtualization to isolate those drivers so that any changes are made have to be verified before the driver code is handed back to the operating system and run. So smart app control is one of the new features that's coming to Windows 11. And I think it's the most important feature in this new update. It relies on memory integrity. Sometimes it's known as core isolation or, or hypervisor code integrity. So there are three different names you might hear circulating for this feature. A smart app control, if it's implemented properly by Microsoft, and of course that remains to be seen, is going to be really effective at protecting devices from hackers. Because we already know that Windows Defender application control, which smart app control is based on, is extremely effective at protecting devices when it's implemented. The main difference between Windows Defender application control and smart app control is that application control is designed for big enterprises and they can decide which applications are allowed to run and which aren't. Now, smart app control is really aimed at small businesses and consumers who don't have their own IT department and it uses artificial intelligence to determine which applications are common and are safe to run on Windows and automatically blocks everything else not just applications, but also things like unknown PowerShell scripts, VB script, and all those kind of things that are commonly used by attackers to compromise PCs. And just like Windows Defender application control, smart app control also provides robust protection, even for those users that still need local administrator privileges for whatever reason. So what are the hardware requirements for memory integrity to be turned on? Now, in principle, memory integrity can run on older chipsets, even chipsets that were released before the Intel 7th generation. But as you know, Microsoft made a cutoff point with the 8th generation Intel chipsets. Now, memory integrity really relies on a feature called mode-based execution control and able to make it perform properly. So while you can enable this on an Intel 6th generation processor, for instance, you will get a really severe performance hit if you do, maybe something like between 30 and 40%. Whereas if you enable this on a modern chip that has MBEC, then you're likely to see something between a 2 and 3% performance drop. So for most users, this is just an insignificant performance change. They will not notice any difference at all. And it's worth the trade-off for the improved security. So while memory integrity was introduced in Windows 10, Microsoft has been improving it with every new feature update of the operating system going into Windows 11 as well. And they're able now to enable memory integrity on a wider set of devices. And of course, the idea is as we go forwards that memory integrity will be enabled everywhere. But of course, regardless of the progress that Microsoft is making with this, there is that slight performance hit. So hardware manufacturers are still allowed to ship Windows 11 with memory integrity turned off for specific kinds of devices. So for instance, if it's a gaming notebook or maybe a device that's intended for creators. So it's most likely that you're going to see memory integrity enabled by default on modern fast devices. So if you've got maybe a 10th, 11th or 12th generation processor. Although that's not to say that you can't choose to manually enable memory integrity on an older processor. I've enabled it, for instance, on an eighth generation Intel processor. I don't use it for things like gaming or video editing. And to be honest, I've not really noticed any difference in performance. 
But for whatever reason, Microsoft has done some testing and they've determined that seventh generation Intel processors or the AMD equivalents of that just don't quite cut it. So I think it's fair for Microsoft to set a minimum requirement of the Intel eighth generation processors and to say, well, you can install it on something older if you want, but then we're not going to support it. At some point, we have to move forwards with the hardware in order to improve the security and the performance of our software together. So it's for every everybody's good at the end of the day. So if you're trying to run smart app control on a device that maybe has a fifth or sixth generation Intel processor, well, of course you can switch on memory integrity and try to get that to work. But you know, good luck with that. You're gonna have a massive performance hit on those devices, of course. If you've got a seventh generation device, you might get away with enabling smart app control and not seeing a big performance impact. You could give it a try, of course. So let me know what you think in the comments about these new security features. They are important, they are really effective. And I think this may be one of the best things that's come into Windows from a security point of view, really since user account control. But anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like. And if you'd like to see similar stuff from me every week, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But that's it from me this week. I'm gonna leave you with another video that you might find useful on the screen here. So take a look at that and I'll see you next time.